Welcome everybody to uh, a discussion on tackling these amortization tables or payment tables type of questions. So here's our scenario. We're going to take out a loan for $8,000 for three years at 3.2% compounded monthly. And we want to fill in this table with our payment amounts and then you know how much of each payment goes towards interest, how much goes towards the principal, i.e. how much is actually paying down the loan. And then based on that, how much is left on the balance of our loan and then repeating the process. And basically you, you could repeat this process all the way down until your last payment and you would see that the last one all the money um, that goes to principal would end up paying off that final amount of the balance. <clears throat> but anyhow, so the first thing we need to do is we need to figure out what our payment is, right? We need to know what our monthly payment is, and that's where we use um, our our friend, the loan payment formula, right? And put in 8000 and our APR and our N and all that fun stuff. So it would be 8000 our APR, 0 0.032. We're doing monthly, so N is 12. On the bottom, 1 minus 1 plus 0 0.032 over 12, and we raise that to the negative, and I'm going to go ahead and do the math here, 12 times Y, so 12 times 3, 36. Okay, plug that all into a calculator and uh, get our payment, or... Um, you know, better yet, if you have a nice uh, Excel calculator set up, we can just put in our principal of not 3,000, of 8,000, our interest rate of 3.2. We're doing monthly, we're doing it for three years, and there's our payment. 233.36, which we can see is the correct answer. Okay. Now we need to figure out how much interest we have to pay in that um, first month. So we're, we're basically using kind of the simple interest formula with a twist, maybe? Um, the idea is we know that interest is simply uh, principal times rate right times time that's just our basic formula for for uh, finding interest well in this case for the first month it's going to be the principal which is 8000 times the interest rate now here's where we have to remember that because we're doing monthly compounding right our interest rate each month isn't 3 and a, or 3.2% it's 1 12th of that right this this piece right here is how much interest we're paying each month. So basically, if you just calculate this top, that will give you your interest for the first month. Because time is just one, right? We're just doing this for one month. So if you just calculate just the top, so Get out a calculator, and that's really easy to do, right? 8,000 times 0.032 divided by 12. And you're going to get $21.33 is going to be your interest. Okay. Well, figuring out these next two numbers are really just simple math. It's just simple subtraction. Because you're going to pay the bank back $233.36. They're going to charge you twenty-one thirty-three in interest, so they're going to first take that away, right? So they're going to take two thirty-three thirty-six. They're going to minus twenty-one thirty-three from it, and the remaining amount, i.e., the two hundred and twelve, right? Thirty-three minus twenty-one, da da da. The two twelve oh three becomes the amount that's actually applied to the balance. So your new balance is simply eight thousand minus that. All right, so again, it's a very simple process. We got our payment from our formula. The payment will stay the same, right? Every that stays constant throughout. The interest we calculate based on the principal of 8,000 times our monthly interest rate, which is the annual interest rate divided by 12, because that's what happens when we compound monthly. That gives us how much interest we have to pay. 
We subtract that from the payment because that's the first thing that gets paid off is the interest. The remaining balance is what's called the principal amount. That gets applied to the loan, so that gets subtracted from the loan balance, and that gives us the new uh, loan amount for the next month's calculations. Now, like I said, the payment stays the same, but now the interest is going to be different because now we're going to calculate interest based on this number. So instead of 8,000 times this, we're going to do 7,787.97 times that and get our new interest payment, which is going to be $20.77. We still have the exact same payment, so we subtract, now see a little bit less, we subtract $20.77 from this. And so now the amount that's going to the principal is also a little bit bigger, right? Because we have a little bit less interest. So now we subtract that amount from the 7,787 and change, and we get a new balance. And then we just repeat the process. So now instead of 8,000 over here, we're going to put $7,575.38, multiply it by this. That gives us our new interest that's obviously going to be less. Oh, wow, it went down 57 cents. How awesome, right? Then we subtract that from our same payment every time to get the amount that goes towards principal. Then we subtract that from our last balance to get our final answer of how much that would be, which if I click on here, we'll show you what it is. Okay, so that's the process. It's a pretty easy process. Um, if you wanted to set something up in Excel, you could do it very easily because you can see it's a very um, uh, a recursive pattern, right? You're doing the same thing each time. You're always calculating interest based on the number that is above and to the right of you, right? This number, 2077, came from multiplying this number times 0.032 divided by 12. This number came from multiplying this one by 0.032 divided by 12, right? This number came from 233.36 minus the number to the right, right? So this one's going to be the same thing, 233.36 minus this, 233.36 minus this. And then the number here is always the number above, right, minus the number in this spot. This number here was the number above minus the number in that spot. So you could very easily um, define kind of those relationships in your Excel spreadsheet and then just drag and drop and you could create an amortization table for, you know, all 36 payments if you wanted to. Okay. Um, this should be enough to get you started. For those of you that actually want to see how to do it in Excel, um, I'll spend the next couple minutes doing that as well. Okay, so I set up a simple little table, right, to match what we have. Here's my payment amount. Here's my principal. Here's my interest. Here's my balance. Now, if you wanted to, you could just, you know, drag this down and have the same payment every time and then do a simple formula of always using the number in that cell. But you could also um, just have a formula that just always uh, refers back to the first cell. And I'm going to show you that just so you learn a, a new process. Okay, so first things first, calculating our interest. So remember this up here, this is month zero. So maybe put in a column and put in a payment uh, number, right? And then this one's payment amount. So zero we haven't started making payments and then this is going to be one and two make it pretty and then highlight it and drag so it knows the pattern and there you go oh we can just go one more a few more to get 36 da, 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 four. 36 that would be our our full payment schedule for three years monthly okay so payment number one, interest equals this times, you know what, let's do this, uh, this divided by 12, which 
course, going to be zero because we didn't put in our interest rate. Let's put in our interest rate so that we can make this thing fully functional where we can always, you know, just change a few things and we don't have to rewrite uh, anything. It'll give us a whole new table. All right, so again, it was equals this amount, right, times the interest rate divided by 12 because this is always going to be monthly. There's really no such thing other than monthly payments, so we don't have to worry about letting our uh -uh N vary. Okay, so that gave us our uh, interest. So principal, remember, it's really easy. It's just going to be equals payment. So I'm going to use this cell, even though it's the payment next to it. I'm going to show you what I'm going to do. Equals this cell minus interest. And then the balance is going to equal balance above it minus the amount that's actually going to principal. And we can see how everything is matching what it should be uh, in our table. Now, if I just drag this as it is, you can see that something's going wrong. Right off the bat, it doesn't seem to want to do the right thing. All right. So we've got some weird stuff going on. Well, the problem is, is that we uh, defined this cell to use uh, the cell above it as the interest rate. So now when we get here, it's taking this cell and it's using the cell above it for its interest rate. And that's why things are getting really big and out of whack and numbers aren't working and it's it's weird. So what you have to do, we want to make sure that these cells are always just using 3% or in, in the face of this, 3.2%. So what you have to do is you have to define this to say, hey, don't take the cell above, just take always D2. So you put a dollar sign in front of the two and that tells Excel, keep the two constant in our computations. So let's try it again. Drag it down. Everything works. As you can see, after we make our last payment, we actually paid 17 cents more than we were supposed to. And usually that's, that's what happens. Um, the last payment of your loan is usually less than the regular payments. Like they, they know that this is gonna happen, so they make your last payment 17 cents less. So you end up just paying the loan off perfectly. But in any case, so this worked. And the only reason why it's working is because we have all of these here. If we didn't have these here, look what happens. It, it falls apart, right? You get all these negative things because now when we go here, it's using the same pattern, right? This said, take the number to the left and above one, and then subtract the number directly to my right from it. So now this is taking the zero over here and subtracting 27.7 from it. That's why you're getting the negative. So again, we need to tell this cell, don't take everything below it. I want you to stay on B2. So we just have to do that same thing with the dollar sign. Put the dollar sign in front of it. And now it's going to hold B2 steady. And now if we drag this down, we get back to the correct thing. So basically we've learned that if we put a dollar sign in front of either the letter or the number, it keeps that thing constant. So like if we were dragging something to the, to the right or the left, we'd put a dollar sign in front of the B if we wanted to make sure that it always kept taking things from the B column. And if you wanted to make sure that it always took this exact spot, you could put dollar sign B, dollar sign 2, and then it locks that thing in place for your entire formula. But as you can see, as we go down the line, it goes from E2C3 to E3C4, right? Then E4C5 and so on and so forth. It does that nice pattern. This one, it does E3, stays on D2, and then 12. And then now we have E4 to that, 
e5 with that, e6 with that, e7 with that, right? So you see it, it just keeps that thing uh, steady. And then same thing here. We've got b2 minus d3, and then b2 d4, b2 d5, b2 d6. And, and that's the beauty of Excel is it does simple patterns really easily if you just know how to work it. And so now we have our entire amortization table, and no matter how long the question was, you know, how many of these things we had to fill in, it's all right here. And then when they give us the next question and we change our payment and we change our balance and we change our interest rate, this will all change automatically, right? Now we're going to borrow $10,000. Sorry, not $10. $10,000. Well, obviously it doesn't get paid off because we don't have the right uh, payment, right? So we'd have to go back to our payment formula, change this to 10000 Get our new payment of two ninety one sixty nine. Make this two ninety one sixty nine, and then we're right back to having that. And instead of zeroing out, now we owe sixteen cents. So our last payment would just be sixteen cents more. So and that, like I said, that's always going to be the case because of of, of rounding issues, right? With the two two ninety one sixty nine. If you looked at the actual payment, it's like 0.69237591, right? And all those little tiny fractions of, of pennies adds up to the very end. Okay, I hope that helps.